Well, welcome viewers here once again on a Monday afternoon. Hello viewers. How's things going out there viewers? It's a very nice day today. Very nice summer's warm day. 27 degrees. Beautiful About day. time too. As we build to the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, next Tuesday we'll have a nice little uh, phantom call out on a Monday afternoon. Like we did last year and hopefully we can get a bit better, uh, do it a little bit better than last year, but it was alright last year. Okay. We can always improve. And um, this is so that you can still maybe move on from your day job. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That, the fella said, yeah, if you're watching this year, mate, just keep your eye on this time. All right. We so know who you are. We know who you are. So yeah, this, I know uh, you are too. We're going to talk about something a bit different before we get your yeah. tip for the um, Oaks. Yeah, Oaks for the Derby. For the Derby, uh, mm -hmm. Victorian Derby. And um, just a couple of headlines here. And um, just showing back in the day in the 60s that you were sort of a big... Well, that was the first year over here, Colin. That was the headline the last game. I won't go into much, to much detail about that, but I'm going to talk about Repentant in a minute. But, yep. And that was uh, in 63 when I broke my neck. And uh, two of big, their first sort of headlines there, Colin. So up in um, the Wimmera area, Horsham, Repentant, you were quite a name. Well, I was, yeah. Back, I was there for five or six years. And uh, people go, people in their 60s and around the Wimmera, they know that name pretty well, Peatling. Oh well, well, while we're on that subject, um, I mean, you you were brought up in Richmond in the Richmond area. Yeah. How did you come to get to play football for Rapunia? Well, it was a little, a little bit of a quick story. But I was playing with Richmond in the uh, '60s. I was playing the main practice games, and I thought I was a walk-up start to get in the seniors for Richmond seniors list. But this come out on the supplementary list. And my mum was going, my mum was going to kill, going to go and kill Green Richmond. But uh, anyway. Uh, I was training with a couple of sides around local sides in Richmond and uh, got a knock on the front door one day and three people were standing in the front door and I was in the hell out who, who, who are they? Who were they? Who were they? And they introduced themselves, Ken Daggett, Alec Gorman and uh, Mick Simon. So they come in and they said, well, we've heard that uh, you can play football. We've been in a Richmond football club. And they said, you're a pretty good rover. And I said, oh, I should be playing with Richmond, Mick. That's mm. his name, your coach. And, uh, Anyway, they said, well, we'd like to come up to Rapanya and uh, play it in the Wimmer League. And I said, well, what's good about it? What's up there? What's the Rapanya? Where is it? Is it, is it the town or what? Is that in South Australia? Well, I thought it was in the Wimmer Rocker range. But, uh, but anyway, we uh, had a bit of a talk and they offered me uh, 12 pen town a game and, uh, and about two so weeks later I was up in Rapanya. How much a game? Twelve pound ten, but the the, AF, the VFL players were getting ten pound ten a game back in them days, Colin. It was wow. a lot of money. So what was the was that was money the reason you went to play for a punyip? Well, it was probably half the reason, yeah. But I I'd probably I was offered to play with a couple of Eastern District sides, but uh, no, it sounded pretty good. But I've never been in the company in my life. What was a, like a wage for the week? Like if you worked back about. Then? Uh, Six pound, I suppose. Six pound ten a week. So it was pretty much like um, a, yeah, really, a, a, really, wage. a really good wage. A lot of money. And of course, a friend of mine, Johnny Ryan, I went and uh, chatted him up and we uh, he decided to go. So him and I went up there together. So you drove up there? That was pretty easy to get well, to. Well, I'll tell you a little story in the, in the, in the interview about yep. driving up there. But we, uh, he decided to, uh, to go and so I said, well, let's go. Because I knew him. Hmm. I didn't know him that well because he was playing in the Richmond Seconds and... He was a couple of years older than me, and, uh, but we decided to make the big journey up to Rapanya. All right, sounds like it was an exciting... Well, my mother, my mother said yes. Uh, was it an easy trip up there? Did no, you find it, find it? So tell us, uh, did you adapt to country life being a city boy? Well, come to think of it, I reckon I, I must have adapted pretty quick because I never got bored, and uh, I had a couple, a couple of jobs. Ronnie and I had a, got, a, they got us a job in the railways, but it wasn't too fast working out in the rain, so we... We didn't like going. Well, we were there for two weeks. I worked three days, so we give that the flick. And uh, and Ken Dagger said, well, "What would you like to do?" And I said, "Oh well, whatever." Park the railway. So we, Mr. Dunlop, come down the pub one next evening and next evening, we all stay and offer me a job on the farm. And I, I was a farmer driving a tractor and cutting wheat. What sort of farm? A wheat farm. Was wheat it? farm and sheep farm. And I was there for three years. Mm. Loved it. That sounds exciting. Now, um, some people say that you um, had a uh, big influence in putting um, 
few extra signposts of, of Rapunia for putting it on the map. Is that true? Well, I reckon we might have, because Ronnie, no, because Ronnie was he was he was a good footballer too, Ronnie himself. But uh, I reckon that was part of uh, getting Rapunia on the map because we knew they never won a flag, mm -hmm. and never been in the grand final, and uh, might have been part of sort of fair sort of part of getting him on the get, getting him on the map. Okay, so. Now, um, 1961 was a good season for you. Tell us a bit about it. Well, it was. I mean, apart from losing an only lost my leg in the first season, I got a very serious injury in the last uh, home away game in 60. I come good. Well, my leg was all right, but uh, yeah, I finished up winning uh, runner-up in the Wimbledon League goal kicking, which is and it's still a record, Colin. That's 60 so goals. 60 goals. All right. It's still a record to this day, which is okay. not a bad effort for. Uh, and I still hold the record for the most goals in a game till this day two by a rope by seven goals. Now before 1961, how many grand finals did Rapunia win? I never but played in any. Never played in any? So in 61 what happened? Who no, One. Got the one and we, you can check that video out. Um, yeah, that's got a bit of footage a, from that. 1961 videos on a few videos back. Uh, yes, and it's all your own footage. You own the footage, you can tell YouTube. Yeah, no one else got it. So that's live on the um, uh, on there. So you had a good year, 1961, finishing 60 goals, running up the goal kicking competition. Yeah. And uh, so, also about the Sportsman of the Week award. Yes, I must mention that there's only been two. While well, I was up there for six seasons, there was only two people won a Sportsman of the Week for football in the Wimmer League. Was one was Ian Morgan, and two was me. Hmm. For that second semi-final. So this is just not footballers. This everything. So you, divers, swimmers, ping, ping pong players. Well, cricket, tennis, any because sometimes cricket. Yeah, cricket. It was a pole vaulters. Pole vaulters or long jumpers. Athletics. I mean, that's a pretty good effort, that. Yeah, and you're in line to win the TV set. The, the runners um, up on that. Yeah. Runners up on that. So that was a little bit disappointing. So it sounds like you had a bit of a journey. This whole repugnant. It was. A, I mean, that uh, I'll be going. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to do a story. I was only sitting last night in my in my wake up this morning that I'm going to take the camera up there mm -hmm. and get on the take some video where I was working on the farm, the old Bill up Bill Dunlop's farm. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to go and sh that, the, the commercial hotel where I live. That, that place. My room's still there. Yes. Number thirteen. Yes. Could tell a few stories too. That number thirteen room. There's a fly on the wall and. Get a few bit of bit of footage of, of Rapanip and uh, and I might get Ian Morgan to give me a hand to uh, get the where I actually drove the tractor and harvest the wheat and cart the wheat and sounds interesting. Show the viewers. Yeah, of course, it's not the first time you've been back. He was a time that you were back in the nineties, where they yeah. were talking about you possibly coaching. Yeah, um, I went up there for the Horsham race, the Horsham Cup, and uh, I was going past. The Wimmer Mail Times and uh, Murray Wilson had to be there and he called out. I said, what are you doing? I said, come up, go and have a look at the cup. And he come in, said, come and do me, I'll do an interview. And uh, I was sort of half thinking about getting the coaching job, but he, yeah. he done that, uh, done done the, that interview. Done it was, interview. I thought it was yeah. pretty good. And there was another one you did a couple of years ago, went up there to a full back page spread and the like. Yeah, the team of the 60s, that was got three pages, front, back and middle, mm. centre, whatever. So you, you might you're threatening to go back again, so that'd be good. Well, you never know what what goes on in the, in this big part of the world, and uh, but it was a, a place of I, I really loved my time at Rapanui. It was a very good place to be, and uh, all way, all out of the road of all taxis and trams and mm. trains and mm. but I, I like going back to it, and I'm going to go back and do do that little uh, footage of uh, what, where I worked and. Bit of archive stuff, I'd say you're very good. All right, well, just finally, um, last week, this this time last week, Monday, you um, tried to pick a winner for the Cox Plate. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. I gave it my little tip for last week, and uh, Julie landed the money. It was Ocean Park. Ocean Park, written by Glenn Boss, and I'll tell you what, he will, I think he'll start in the McKinnon Stakes next Saturday, and he'll win that, he'll probably start threes on. Mm. But he was... My tip and it. Uh, he wasn't the favourite. No, six to one. He was about the fourth or fifth favourite, wasn't he? Third or fourth. To oh yeah. no, he, he's a very good horse. He's, a, he's going to be a superstar. Oh, he's a superstar now. So the thing is, if you want tips on the horse racing, who do you see? Turn into. Turn in. in then. Turn into 
82 Catherine Avenue. Well, tune into the Barry Peatland channel. Yeah, I'll show where the video comes from. 82 Catherine, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, well, the Derby. Vic Victorian Derby's this week. Yeah, I think a uh, super cool thing had been done, done deal last week in the, uh, what was it, uh, the mile race at Mooney Valley. I think it, no, 2,000 metres, I think this super cool Mick Cavanaugh's. Super cool. Super cool will win the der derby and uh, I think Dun Dundeal might uh, improve a bit at Flemington, a bigger track might suit it better, but I just do, do think super cool will so win So give, it, give us a little derby. bit more conviction. Barry, yeah. do you think Super Cool or is it Super Cool no, is going to win? I think it'll win, yeah. I mean, you can't do any more than say that. You, I think it'll win and uh, it's... Well, it's only improved on the last one too because it uh, done it hard and it came away at the finish and fixed up the... So finish. any... Uh, so did you reckon Dunedin... Dundeal. Dundeal second? No, I no, don't know. He, I, he might play somewhere. I don't know, but I'm not worried about second or third. But I'm just giving Super Cool... Super Cool. ...the winner of the Victoria Derby. And in the Melbourne Cup, an early prediction, I, th I still think Dunedin will win the Melbourne Cup. Okay. If he draws under 12, I reckon he'll, uh, he'll finish too strong for him. So, so stay tuned next week, the Phantom uh, Call from Phantom Barry. Call on Monday, and so you don't give it away too early. because no. but, um, So super cool for the, the Victorian Derby and then stay tuned for next Monday. Yeah. Um, for the big one. We'll try and do a little bit better next year. Uh, this this year for I didn't think it was good as good as a call I've done before, but, mm. but give so it a little bit more zip. Well, I'll get do a bit more work and a uh, bit more well, well, enthusiasm. Sixteen hundred hits last year. Probably. A bit more enthusiasm. Well, people, the people want excitement. Well, you got to get get them. Isn't people. that right, people? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, you got to keep a uh, that's right. You got to have a bit of a uh, bit of charisma about your call. Like uh, and Greg Miles must have heard me last week because he didn't know none of this slow out now. Well, yeah. Mr. He said, Mr. Start by the left and a half, which is a bit more great. Bit more Take notes, must have, someone must have told you. All right, well, we look forward to next video. Next yeah, week. well, yeah, next week will be, uh, it'll be something different and uh, interesting, so we'll see you next time. That's goodbye from me. And me.